All right, so you ready for the next problem we're gonna face today? You know, I was really looking forward to uh, just an easy coilover install. So we've been working on, holy crap, who's that guy? That's right, haircut again. My goodness. Uh, so we've been working on the TE72 lift back uh, X doghouse car. And well, um, somehow this week has just really, it's gotten away from me. It is Wednesday. All right, middle of the week. I have not touched anything on that car. So we've got it running pretty good. We got the inside cleaned out. We got the outside cleaned off. We got that engine bay. Well, that's pretty clean too. And uh, it seems to be running pretty good. That being said, haven't test driven it, which is funny because normally as soon as some things run, I'm like, better take this somewhere inconvenient. Not this one. So, uh, we haven't tested the brakes. I know the parking brake works, which has been a blessing because that's what's allowed me to use, you know, move it around the driveway uh, and even unload it off the trailer without, you know, running through my neighbor's fence. So, no brakes and, well, we haven't test driven it, but clearly, more importantly than test driving it, we need to lower the thing. It looks absolutely ridiculous in the driveway next to the wagon, which is, well, freaking slammed. So, what are we gonna do? We got we gotta get some suspension on it. And well, we've built coilovers in the past, so clearly we can do that, but why the heck would we do that when I've actually got a third TE72? And guess what? That son of a gun's already got coilovers on it. So, here's the plan. We're gonna run out to Michael's property, uh, the pasture, if you will, and uh, we're gonna yank the front coilovers off of the other, other TE72, because when we get to that one someday, totally different plans for front suspension on it. Can't find fifth. There we go. And uh, so we won't need the CX racings that came on it. That car also has a brake master cylinder on it that was known working. And uh, well, some other goodies we might grab for, you know, to have at the house. We'll have to run out there another day and put this uh, lift back suspension on that car so that it's still mobile. But that should get us at least sorted out for now. That's the plan, that's what we're doing. Let's go traffic. Sat in traffic for a while, had to get some uh, milk tea and chicken nuggets and pastries because, well, you know, I'm a child. Here we are, we've got our CX racing coilovers and some unknown brand new lower control arms that are, well, uh, apparently longer than stock. So that's cool because I was gonna one inch extend the stock ones, but we'll use whatever these are and whatever length they are. Oh, you can't see the rest of the car, you silly. So, this is the view. I see from my driveway every day. And well, you know, I don't even think the wagon's all that low. I mean, it is, but it just, I don't know. But keeping in mind, these are the exact same chassis. Uh, look where the rocker panel is on that car versus that car. And uh, that's the same size back tire. Well, that one, that one's way up in the fender and this one is not even close to the fender. Now that's a 15 inch wheel and it. <laughs> so, uh, I guess that's why we just gotta do something about that. So we'll do these coilovers today. Ought to be fun. Yeah. A little disassembly already, so I'm a little dirty. However, these are gonna be what we're working with. Uh, CX Racing. Do a lot of cheap stuff. I've never personally messed with CX Racing stuff, but you know, they used to sponsor uh, Kelvin o Areola, who drifts one of these things. Kelvin Areola, the CX Racing FCR7. Ooh, Kelvin, it's exploding up front bumper. As it says on his windshield, dang, uh-oh. And that guy's pretty good. So, you know, maybe these will be good. Uh, there's some random markings on here. No idea what any of that means. I don't know what the spring rates are on these, but 
These are for an A86, uh, which if you don't know, the TE chassis, KE chassis, AE70 chassis, all share a ton of design with the A86. Uh, so a lot of the parts are pretty much directly interchangeable. However, uh, being that this is an early TE72, uh, the camera hat will not line up. Um, 82, 83 should just bolt straight onto the 80, AE86 camera plates. Uh, the early cars, uh, one of the holes is too far out. So we'll just drill a new hole for that one. That's how my wagon is. Uh, it really, it's not a big deal. So the fronts, well, that, that, that's them. Oh, as for the rear, owie, that thing just swung around and hit me in the ankle. Once again, who knows? I don't know the spring rates on these, hopefully soft. But if the car is too soft and can't, you know, slide around and have fun, I do have the extremely stiff stance rear springs from an 8.6 that we took out. Uh, this is your height adjuster. May or may not use that. I like low cars. Um, and there's your rear spring. So uh, who knows? And we've got our uh, height adjustable. This adjustment here just to drew, adjust your droop travel. Um, realistically, it should just be short enough to where this spring stays captured under full droop. Um, so, a lot of people I don't feel like on a divorced spring setup know exactly how that's supposed to work. But really, this should allow you to have droop travel while still retaining the spring uh, when you're jumping the Grand Canyon. So, Decent looking little 86 shock. These are adjustable. Uh, don't know how many clicks and don't know how effectively, but they should definitely be better than whatever's on that. Thing. All right, we'll get this thing jacked up and supported. See if we can't blow through this front coil ring so. Feels like a shoes type of day, but I don't feel like putting on shoes, so. All right, so for remover, we're gonna go Blast, 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 blast. Clunk. Yeah. Should go just that easy. There's our stock assembly. Left the uh, control arm installed because, well, we got new ones and uh, I think they're longer. So let's talk about that real quick. Here on the ground, it is actually extremely hard to tell that these are longer than these, but it's it's actually quite substantial uh, when I ran the tape on it, because visually I was like, man, this is maybe four millimeters longer. Uh, running the tape, it's like an inch, half an inch, three quarters of an inch. I don't know. I don't remember anymore, but uh, I still do not know exactly what control arms these are. Uh, this might just be AE86, um, but I don't know uh, because I thought TE72s and A86s had the same length control arms. However, uh, I can't find any information on the TE72 versus the KE70. The KE70 uh, was a steering rack and pinion car. The T cars are steering gearbox and the subframes are actually a little different. So the TE72 control arms might just be shorter than the A86, uh, which is cool. So what it's gonna do for us is it's gonna push the bottom of the wheel farther out. It'll give us some negative camber, a little extra track width, but also make the steering pivot point a little bit farther out from the steering gearbox, not rack and pinion, and actually effectively give the steering gear farther range of motion to pull the steering. So actually just by extending the lower control arms, we're going to get a little bit more steering angle, which is great for parking and stuff. So uh, yeah, end rant. Let's slap this stuff back. All right, so control arms in. We've got our coilover up, but we're not bolted in because well, remember what we said, we're not gonna line up. So as you can see, it's just barely set back from the other three on the A86 top hat. So we'll just blast that hole out real quick, bolt this thing in. 
We're gonna move these because whomever adjusted the camber last time didn't realize that the nuts were gonna, or the bolts were gonna go under the tower. So we'll move those and we'll be good. So the next problem we're going to encounter is, well, this bolt spacing. Uh, for an A86, it's this weird shape, not square at all. Uh, for a TE72, it's very square and unfortunately doesn't line up with any of those holes. Uh, as well as the center bore is actually larger. Um, the caliper bracket is supposed to sit hub centric on a flange in there. So the problem is the A86 caliper brackets kind of need to have, uh, but this is what came on these coilovers. And um, well, it's the spacing from here to here is uh, not far enough apart for these TE72 calipers. Now, the cool fix for that would be just A86 brakes. Well, uh, front calipers, they're not easy to come by. You can get them. I'm not gonna be able to find one today. So uh, that's not gonna work. Um, so it would either be extend these tabs on the caliper bracket to suit the calipers or redrill our TE bracket, which I feel is less sacrilegious because I can get these. So I think the plan is going to be drill the TE72 bracket to fit the A86 strut casing. Pretty sure people have done this in the past. Uh, it's not the smartest, but it should be just fine as long as we get our holes, you know, rightish. So making decent progress here. Here's the sitch. So our first three are done because this one's going to have a substantial amount of overlap. So the plan here is going to be to bolt this one down to this and use it as a guide to hopefully keep my drill bit straight while doing that hole since it's going to want to walk a lot. <laughs> well, here she is all drilled out. Looks great. Works great. Uh, except this is the AE86 caliper bracket. All I did was a uh, drill it to TE72 struts. Um, T72 on the one I needed to redrill. Well, it's exactly how it was when we pulled it off still. <laughs> Yay. So, um, guess we'll drill those again. Yo! All right. So you ready for the next problem we're going to face today? You know, I was really looking forward to, uh, just an easy coilover install. Joke's on me. So anywho, uh, the shape on the back of this versus the shape of that means now that even though we are drilled to fit, owie, uh, this shape here is interfering back here on the bracket. So we're going to have to grind some, some material off of here, uh, preferably leaving this untouched because, you know, for strength and stuff, since we didn't, you know, elongate any holes or anything. So, uh, mostly here, a little bit, I believe here, we're gonna have to beep with the old grinder. So, moving right along. Well, 11 years later, we are actually in there, on there, installed. Uh, so, we got the caliper brackets working. That's good. All right. Well, I opted to use these red uh, known known working calipers off the other car. Well, uh, I don't know how known working they are because, well, the caliper slides, they were both uh, seized. So the caliper didn't move and I couldn't get the pad back in. So after dealing with that, we are in fact back in there in the money. I even put the, uh, you can't tell, but they are much nicer rotors from the other hubs on. So we've got newer brakes, still don't have a master cylinder. And uh, well, we've been messing with this thing for hours and we've only done one coiler. Oh, cars are great. Will be much lower though, so that's pretty cool. Well, 
the uh, fronts, they're on. And, uh, well, you know, uh, because the longer control arms, our tie rods are going to be too short. We're going to have to definitely, you know, play with some toe. Uh, we might even have to change tie rods or extend these tie rods to make them work. So, moving on to the rear. Man, it is in the 90s today. It is hot. Uh, so, first order of business, though, we're going to start here. We're going to blast these top nuts off of the shock absorbies. Uh, then jack up the rear and then should just be a few bolts really hopefully nothing stupid happens back there and we can just be done that'd be nice went ahead and uh hosed off out here underneath the car because well kind of icky um and you know beyond that it's hot so kind of cooling the ground off a little bit um while that was drying, ran up the road and got some beverage uh, to maybe stay hydrated. Um, not really sweating right now, which is probably a problem. So, uh, the rear, lower bolt, upper bolt, uh, it's probably rusted on there real good, but that thing right there, that's what's holding our spring in. So, uh, probably whack these things with hammer, get the rear shocks out pull the springs out and uh throw the new springs in and the new shocks on and that's literally the rear the rear should be easy all right one other problem we're definitely definitely gonna encounter is uh this exhaust is extremely low and um stock ride height it was scraping on the ground so can only imagine it's not gonna move anymore. Anyway, uh, so got these uh, these steelies that are chrome and rust, and I I don't know, uh, they were cheap. They were pull apart on a Datsun 260Z, and I just you know I scooped them. So now I've got them laying around. What a perfect car for it. So let's get her down. See how she looks. Um, you know, try to set this side fairly straight. Definitely gonna need a fair bit of fender work. Yeah, better, but like also worse because uh, ain't gonna roll the way it sits, but it looks cooler. Cool. I even like this big really big tire size. Uh, I don't think the front will work, full lock and stuff, but I like the 195.60s. They're a bit juicy, kind of muscular tire for such a sporty looking car. Uh, side note, when I closed the hatch just now, I had kind of been scared of this. Anyway, so uh, maybe at the same time that the, uh, the front window was smashed out of this car, the rear glass has also been smashed out. I don't know, maybe two different times. Uh, but anyway, guy I got it from, he uh, he got a windshield from the junkyard and put it in. Uh, problem is, we used this uh, factory weather stripping and um, well, to say it's uh, no longer installed, well, that would be true. But you know, hey, She's uh, down there a lot closer to the ground where her uh, sister, cousin, brother, auntie, the wagon is. Looks a lot better. But, you know, uh, I might try. We still got some daylight today. I mean, I don't even know what time it is, but it's still pretty early. Might try to get the interior stuff tossed back in. Um, it's been hanging on the fence for a while now. And, uh, well... Maybe do something with this dent in the roof. By this dent, I mean also this dent. It's uh, it's kind of a soup bowl up there. And well, you know. Uh, at some point, we're going to have to uh, tend to, well, the tie rods. Because, well, this side, as you can see, I, I towed it. It's a little towed in right now, but I was trying to eyeball it straight when I uh, let the car down. But if you notice right over here, we got a lot of tow out. That's because, well, with longer control arms, the tie rods are way too short and we got a ton of toe out. Um, so we'll have to address that. Uh, the front fenders, 
still their plastic fender inner liner, uh, which we'll probably have to remove or trim to do some fender work for the front. Uh, I think we'll be able to get away with just barely a roll, honestly, in the front. The rear, however, is gonna need all of the roll. And uh, let's see, this side's super flush to the fender lip. And this side is also super flush to the fender lip. Uh, if anything, I think the axle is pushed out towards the driver's side a little bit more. Um, these cars are four link with a pan hard. And uh, well, when you lower them, the pan hard bar is going like this, but since it's uh, a certain length on a radius, it'll push the axle out farther one way or pull the axle in one way farther. Uh, so we'll need to address that by either extending or shortening the pan hard bar to center the axle. And uh, well, we're not gonna spend any money on that. So I've got some, some tricks in mind if we need to. Um, but yeah, I guess for today, that's it.